Now in this backpack right here, I have a workstation computer, a monitor, a server, a router, and a battery to power everything. If you pay attention to the community section for this channel, you probably saw it all kind of together up and running. Basically, the theoretical use case for this thing is to be my doomsday home lab. When it's all properly set up and configured, what it is going to be able to do is provide a Wi-Fi network that will be offline but still be able to host a good chunk of the internet's data, primarily on uh, open source data such as Wikipedia, WikiHow, TED Talks, some of my own personal media library, a bunch of eBooks, and probably my favorite, all of the mapping data my heart can desire, with big thanks to OpenStreetMaps. Now this is going to be a multi-part video. In this video, I'm just gonna kinda of overview some of the hardware that we are currently, or that we are going to be using. Future video or upcoming video, we are going to be actually running through all the various software that is making this happen. And the third final video, I'm gonna put it in kind of a actual use case and demonstrate everything. This video is sponsored by Exter. They're the ones that make the bag that we're actually using and a bunch of other accessories. I'm not gonna do a full ad read because you're gonna be seeing this backpack as we kind of unpack everything and look at it. Just note that if you're interested near the end of this video, you can use the link down below to get 20% off. Originally, I was going to use the LTT backpack, which is a great bag, but it's a little too bulky big. This one is a little thinner and easier to kind of uh, use in the scenario in which that I would need to use it. Overall, the bag is pretty nice. It is water resistant. There are waterproof zippers. The back is textured in a way you won't get super sweaty and it has all these various straps and whatnot which we can use for accessories. The actual use case or the main use case for this backpack is for photographers or actually hauling like photography equipment. But of course you can use it for just about anything, obviously. <laughs> There's a little zipper pocket here on the side that I'm not using yet. You could mount something here. This is supposed to be a tripod spot. There's a side pocket here for water, additional strapping. So now what we're gonna do is actually unpack this thing and check out what we got going on. Let's open her up. And actually in the bag, it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot going on. I have two separate bags and then I have a couple other smaller things and accessories. In this little bag, which is also an extra bag, this is their tech case. This little thing actually houses all the computing of this entire setup. I'll open that up in just a moment. Ugh. First thing we're gonna focus on is how are we powering this thing? Within this extra camera case is our battery. It, it's really cool because it ended up being the absolute perfect size for this. Open this up here and check out that battery. It is truly beautiful. The actual camera bag case, you can put those like kind of organizers for lenses and whatnot. There are some zipper pockets here for cords, which I will be using. And of course you can attach it to the exterior of the backpack if you needed to. Now this thing, this is a battery from FD Dynamics. Now, I originally wanted to review one of their like handheld LiDAR 3D scanning devices. Uh, they, they wouldn't send it to me, I'm not quite too sure why. But so they sent this instead. The specific model of this guy is the FJD Pony 500. This is a 500 watt with a 504 watt hour power capacity. Basically, I went ahead and ran everything at idle for I think over 24 hours. And where are we at here? We're at about 40% battery capacity. Now I do wish thing, this thing had a screen that would make it a whole lot nicer, but I don't really need one. The thing is so low power usage that it doesn't really matter too much. On the front here, we have 58 volt in and out. I believe this would be a really good connection for their solar panel. Right here on the front, we have a 100 watt in and out USB, which I actually don't end up needing to use everything on the front here because we have this. This right here is their little DC box connector. On this thing, it adds a two additional 18 watt USB A's, 100 watt USB C, and a 65 watt USB C. And even with this attached, it ends up being the perfect size for this bag. As here on the side on the 100 watt, I end up having the workstation PC plugged into 65 watt is dedicated for the server. And 18 watt is more than enough to power the little router that we're using. All of this is excessive for the actual hardware that we have. The actual batteries in here are NMC batteries. There's no fans or anything, so it's super lightweight. And in prolonged use case, it really doesn't get too warm, which is nice. 
to actually charge the thing, I do have a separate solar panel that I could plug into here. And with the usage of everything running, it doesn't take up more than 100 watts, so the solar panel would be perfectly fine to both charge the battery and simultaneously run everything that I'm about to unpack. But speaking of unpacking, we're back onto the extra tech case. This thing has everything else. Let's start with the server, shall we? So this little thing is currently running Casa OS. I might switch it to just Ubuntu server and run a portainer, but this is going to be in charge of hosting things such as Wikipedia, all the stuff I mentioned previously. It has an Intel quad-core processor with a turbo speed up to 2.2 gigahertz. I believe it's a Celeron. With that, it's incredibly low when it comes to the power consumption. This right here is their official website, and if I scroll back up, you can see some of the, uh, <laughs> they got some nice animations. There it is, 6 watt TDP, so it takes almost no power to run this thing. One thing that's nice about this versus the Zima board, which is made by the same company, is the RAM is upgradable. You can kind of see through this uh, clear plastic, the RAM stick. It does have, I think, 32 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage built into it. But what I'm going to do is use this right here. This is a PCIe 2.4X4. With this, I could plug in a wide variety of accessories to it. And what I'm planning on doing for the data on the server is plugging in this guy right here. This is a dual NVMe slot adapter. I'll set up like RAID mirroring so the two one terabyte drives that I'll put in here will be mirrored so if one fails, it's not too big of a deal. You just plug it in before you power it up and we'll have all of our storage. And in a doomsday scenario where the internet goes down and we don't have access to a lot of things, there are other accessories. They're actually in here. There's two big kind of stretchy zipper pockets where I have some extra stuff for it because you're never gonna know when you're gonna need something else. First and probably most important is this right here. If I so happen to need some more USBs, we'll have that option. And then right here in this bag, you just never know when you're gonna need access to some 10 gigabit networking. I haven't done a full dedicated video on the Zima Blade. It's a cool little thing. I may do that in the future. But just having some PCIe expandability on little servers or mini PCs like this is definitely appreciated. Actually on the device we have two SATA connectors, we have a way to power our drives, and then on this side we have the USB-C for power, a USB-A, I believe this is a, uh, a 3.0, we have gigabit ethernet and then mini display port. And put that back in this box over here, we have some additional accessories and adapters such as mini display to HDMI, we have a couple SATA cords, a single NVMe slot or PCIe adapter, just some things we might need. So from there, we're gonna focus on these two pockets. This is our computer and our router. Starting with the computer. I've actually done a whole separate dedicated video on this little guy. This, th this right here is a mini PC. I can completely cover it with my hand. This is the Minusform EM680. This one right here is the base model. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 uh, NVMe SSD hard drive. But I went ahead and upgraded it to a two terabyte. And with that, I'll be able to have a backup of all the data that we have on our server on here, just in cases. Now this little tiny, tiny computer, this thing has an AMD Ryzen 6800U. And with that, it has AMD Radeon, so you can actually use it for gaming if you wanted to. As far as power in, it is a 65 watt TDP, and you can power it with any of the USBs. This thing actually has pretty good I.O. It's missing an Ethernet, which kind of sucks, but uh, with the next thing we're gonna check out, we'll have a Wi-Fi network. It has USB 4, uh, auxiliary, power. Then over here, we have a spot for a micro SD, USB, HDMI, two more USBs, and another USB 4. And I went ahead and installed Debian. This is Debian 12 Bullseye currently installed on this thing. Don't get me wrong, I love Fedora, but I'm definitely becoming a, a connoisseur of Debian of the sorts. So that is our desktop PC. And from there, we're going to go to the one device that I actually purchased specifically for this little project. And that is this. This is the GLINet AC1200 wireless travel router. <laughs> And this thing is awesome. You can see here, this is the Amazon page for it. It comes in at 40 bucks, which is not too bad for what you get. Going down to some of the specs here, this thing does have both uh, 2.4 gigahertz and uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi bands. 
with I believe a max speed of, it says over here, 864 megabits a second on the five gigahertz band. This thing has OpenVPN and WireGuard pre-installed, which is always appreciated. You can use this as a repeater for public Wi-Fi and use this as your own hardware dedicated VPN. And if I go back up here, you can see it has 128 megabytes of RAM, not as much as I'd prefer, but for the price, that's what we kind of expect. On the back here, we have WAN, two LANs. All of these are at one gigabit. We have a USB 2.0 that you could use to connect, um, I believe, storage, or you could even connect like a uh, LTE dongle to it to uh, get internet through there. And of course, we have our USB-C for power which is the main reason I purchased it. <laughs> We're actually gonna go into the dashboard and kind of configure some things in the next video, but I do have to say for this little thing, it's really nice and there's some great options within the dashboard. So that is our entire network infrastructure in this bag here. <laughs> I have an additional battery that Exter sent over because you never know when you're gonna need uh, some portable power. You don't want to plug in directly to that box. You might need to take something somewhere else. This battery is actually pretty beefy, 26,800 milliamp hours. Supporting up to 20 volts and 3 amps, we have a USB-C in out, a USB out, and a USB-A. Touch this button, it's fully charged, good to go. Now in here we have this thing, you may be wondering, what is this hunk of magnetic metal? What this is, is our stand for the monitor. It's an espresso display. So if I grab the bag here and open up the top, there's actually a, a tech pocket I think is what they want to call it. Yep, tech pocket. Fits up to a 16 inch laptop in it. I don't have a 16 inch laptop, which honestly adding a laptop might be a good idea. I have a pretty low power uh, Intel, I think it's a N95 laptop. That would be a great addition to the setup. But all finalizations will be in the final video. This is that display, I have a folio on it right now. If I go ahead and pop this thing off, this right here is the display and you can see I can just pop, pop it right onto this little stand here and we're good to go. And I mean, it is ridiculously thin. I forgot the exact measurement. I think it's like 0.3 or 0.5 inches thick. Like you can barely see it on the camera. It's a 1080p display, it's full touch screen, so we won't always have to have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to our workstation. Here's a little comparison of all their models. The one I have here is the 13T, it goes up to 17 inches, has a 60 hertz refresh rate, 300 nit peak brightness, 3.3 inch display, and you can see 0.2 inches thin, my god. 1.5 pounds of weight, so when you get the weight of this thing, the weight of the battery, which I think is 7.5 pounds, Everything in here adds up to be roughly 11 or 12 pounds for this bag. And I'm not really gonna hook everything up right now. You kind of saw in that picture, we're gonna focus more on that in the next video. So that was the setup, and this is by no means its final form. If you have any specific recommendations that you think would complete or make this build perfect, please let me know down below. And that includes services. I've mentioned some of the things that I plan on installing on this thing, but if you have a service that you think absolutely needs to be on a doomsday kind of offline server like this, please let me know. Um, thinking about it, an actual like realistic use case for this setup would be using this hardware in something like an RV where you go and uh, go places where there's no internet access. This would actually be a, a more realistic use case. But I kind of like the uh, prepper mentality of uh, the <laughs> pack and go home lab. Again, big thank you to Exter for sponsoring this video, making it possible. Definitely a great backpack. Use the link down below. They're also the same company that makes those wallets I've done uh, sponsored segments on in the past. So I'll have a separate link down below for that. And with all of that, uh, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.